Hey everyone, Bruce Muffson, LCSW from Sunridge of Nevada. I'm coming to you with more breakdowns. As everyone knows, obviously, we've been releasing songs, one song after the other, from Mac Miller's, you know, Rest in Peace Mac, last album, and we've been going through the different songs. So we're going to be doing that today. And of course, everyone knows the album was Swimming, just an amazing album, and as homage to him, we're going through song after song. So here we go now. This is song seven. It's called it's called um, swimming. I'm sorry. It's called ladders. Apologize. Ladders. Here we go. This is an amazing song, and it's an amazing song on so many different levels. Not just for the lyrics, which were great, but for but for me is how he arranged and how he produced the song instrumentally. He layers it beautifully, and what a talented musician he truly was. And listening, I heard flavors for me of bossa nova. I heard flavors of jazz. Um, I even heard funk. Um, this song, as someone said in one of the comments, could literally be played anywhere over a loudspeaker. Like, well, again, I'm using the term Kmart, but um, they're about to go out of business. But you get the idea. Just anywhere. Sears, Walmart. Well, um, dating myself, Sears is gone too. But Walmart, just fantastic. Ladders is also a great title for the song as it just takes you in a new direction. And I want to share this with the listeners also. I'm realizing from listening to the song, and again, as I said this before, each song I have to listen to about 10, 15 times to get the flavor of it. He didn't just put these lyrics and these titles out there randomly. Each one meant something to him. This was a very, very personal album. I'm realizing more and more. And Ladders, where you go up or you go down, is a perfect metaphor for that. And finally, I want to just throw this last compliment out there. This song could be played in a tiny nightclub of 75 seats and literally at a, at a stadium that could hold 50,000 people. And so talented that he uses the music to set up the lyrics. And often in music, you don't often always find that. But he had the ability to make that happen. So here we go. Um, in the first paragraph, it goes, and this is in the chorus, somehow we got to find a way, no matter how many miles it takes. It takes, I'm sorry. I know it feels so good right now, but it all come falling down. When the night meet the light, turn to day. And what I liked about this paragraph was, is that what he's saying to me is that I see the end and I have to get away before it destroys me. The high feels good. Oh, so, so good. But in the end, you still have to deal with life around you. And night is a tremendous metaphor for not being in the right frame of mind, you know, again, I was saying um, since the Old Testament, you've seen the, you know, the term night, you know, night, dangerous, scary, you know, hide, be afraid, you know, be in the corners, be in the shadows, night, night, night. There's like literally thousands of references to the term night in movies, plays, books, theater, you name it, music. But what's also interesting to me is that this is where the two twin towers of depression come together. Depression and addiction come together, and they come together as one. And they make it so much more uh, difficult to deal with it. So he goes, when you're on top, till the ball drop, you've never seen it be so real. Uh, true words never spoken. What happens with depression is you get into the spiral. Depression, down, addiction brings you up. Depression down, addiction up. What starts to happen though is it starts to become faster and faster. Depression down, addiction up. Depression down, addiction up. Depression down, addiction up. Depression down, addiction up. That's what happens. And the problem with that is that you turn into a gerbil running like those circles in like a little cage that every kid has. And eventually the gerbil will run and run and run and run and run and run and run. And then finally... All it got out of it was some cardio because the circle took it nowhere. It's a circle run. Be self-aware when you're hitting and feeling this way, hitting this way of thinking, and you're getting into this kind of frame of mind. Red alert, red alert, shields up because other issues are going to be happening as well and this is the, where the dual diagnosis part comes in that you want to try and head off at the pass and not have it slam into you like a tsunami. You want to avoid that from happening. Now, he then goes to say another line. 
Uh, and there's a reason why this album is called Swimming. He goes, I'm swimming a bit. There's always that water reference in almost every single song on this album. And then it goes, well, I'm a, I'm a maintain. I'm staying so high. Put the ladder all the way up till we touch in the sky. That I will continue to stay in this mindset. Let's go as high as we can to get away. Or think we're getting away. But in the end, all you're doing is lying to yourself. And that's so often with, you know, in therapy and in counseling, is that we get into this mindset that only people we're really lying to is ourself. No one knows. No one sees. No one figures out. But in fact, uh, we do. I was talking to someone in my family, a family member, uh, like a cousin, and I said to him when I'd seen him, I said, hey, I think you're dealing with depression, like things aren't going so good. No, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine. He had some shaky moments and some rocky moments, and then finally he said to me a few months ago, hey, I was in a bad spot, I was in a black area. Thanks, Bruce, for giving me the encouragement, at least keeping it real, being honest with me. I said, no problem. I'm not taking credit that I got him out of his depressive situation, but I helped make him self-aware that someone's concerned, someone's seeing it for what it is and just calling it for what it is. Not to live that lie. You need someone to tell you the truth and open up those curtains, so to speak. And that's another thing, too, when he says, uh, you know, yeah, waking up, you know, I open up my eyes. Do you mind if I blow your mind? A little closer, baby. Don't be shy. Yeah, opening up your eyes, opening up those eyes, opening up those eyes means seeing light in the truth. You can't have that if you're depressed. Depression needs the darkness. It needs the gloom. Let's focus on taking you back from reality. As one person had said to me, I knew that I was living a lie, but it was my lie and my fantasy. And avoiding the truth about what I had become. So let me share this. When you guys hopefully do look for therapy, please, please, please take the time to find someone that is competent and will do you more good and will do you good and not harm. I am underlining the word competent three times. One, two, three. Competent is in all caps and it's red competent, competent, competent. I spend so much of my practice and my day job, my night job, my weekend jobs, with all I'm doing, and it's always about trying to deal with people who are not competent, giving advice to people that desperately need people to look out for them. You got to find someone competent and that will do you more good and not harm. And they will help you if you're living a lie because what therapy is meant to be is to be that light. That's the point. And the goal of therapy is to point you in the right direction and to get away to get away from the need to feel that you have no options to work with. Finally, I want to say this to you. He put these last three lines in the last verse, second verse. And I don't know it all, but I do know this. Before you know me, better know self. And I've been in this blank so long that it doesn't smell. Wow. That's an amazing three lines. Know yourself. You know, we're led to believe, you know, from Hollyweird that this stuff happens overnight. We just feel good. Wake up in the morning, some tough love. You run five miles, you drink some orange juice, and you're ready to rock the world. Okay, that doesn't, <laughs> doesn't happen that way. Okay, it takes a lifetime, and for everyone, it's different. Don't compare yourself to others. One of the things we're trying to prove on this channel is you don't have to follow the crowd. It's okay to be yourself. I've worked with people, it took them two, three, sometimes four years before something I said struck home on that coconut, and it finally, meant, finally made sense. What he said, you see, that line just bothered me. The last line, I've been in this blank so long, it doesn't smell. Meaning he didn't see himself able to get out of the muck, out of the mire, out of the garbage. He had been in this, stuck in this so long, he didn't see the way out. So I'm just telling you from experience, 
you want the clarity, it can happen, but it comes quicker if your brain's not filled up with anything that's self-destructive. Not just drugs and alcohol. Could be overeating. It could be destructive relationships. It could be a toxic living environment. It could be a toxic work situation. There's all these different factors that go along into this. So that's why, but I'm just saying it's a lot easier to see these things to see things clearly when your brain is clear of destructive corro- corrosive influences. That's why if you're struggling with depression and addiction is right behind it, it's not the way and it's not the answer. Go get help from a real competent professional therapist that can literally change your life in a positive direction and give you the tools to be successful. Thanks guys. Thank you.